Welcome back to yet another YouTube video. It is your girl Lin Wei and there's absolutely no way without going through the way. I am back again with another video. I know my hair looks like a mess. And you can tell by the title, um, this is part two of my testimony. <laughs> So the part one um just to catch you up if you didn't watch it i'm gonna put it on the cards there and yeah so in, in part one i did discuss obviously like my like the childhood and upbringing of me and how that influenced and affected me as an individual and how god took me out of that situation and how he was there throughout the whole thing that's also yeah a big thing for me that the fact that when I look back and I'm like, Jesus was there, like God was really, really there and present. And even though I didn't know it, he was there and protecting me and guiding me and just being around me. So after my childhood, we now move on to the struggle of sexual immorality and lust. And just like um, the deadly sins, like the seven deadly sins, I had envy, I had last i had gluttony i had um uh anger was also a deadly scene yes it is definitely a deadly scene i think i've forgotten some of them but like i know them there 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 are seven of them then um so there's just like the other three i didn't have so that's why i'm not i don't remember them so but anyway um so i grew up very envious of people around me in my life like I would see the relationship that other individuals had with their parents and I would be very, very envious of it and I just would want something. You know, like when you constantly are dwelling in the idea of this perfect family because you are seeing it in someone else's life, that's how, that's where I used to be. And that made me hate my life and hate myself and not take into consideration because... I really had very good parents because they took they took care of me. They just didn't take care of certain aspects that they didn't know were important to me, right? So yeah, that's just the other part. I was very very um yeah. I was really envious, like honestly, like even when it came to like beauty wise, I had a lot of insecurities. I mean, look at my teeth. I had like a lot of insecurities about that the way i used to speak and how like i would go and speak on the podium like in school not even on the podium you know public like oral presentations like i had the confidence but i didn't have like the articulation and i struggled with articulation and that had tied me up so badly because people would laugh at me and they would bully me and I would laugh it off and pretend like it's fine but when i would sit alone like it would really like like it it pressed on me and dawned on me that yo these people like this is, this is what they think of me like anytime i have to speak I, I would get so nervous and i would get so you know like you know when you know deep down in your heart that no man i know how to speak I, I like it wasn't even like I know how to speak like I knew what I wanted to say because there were times I would try and speak out words and they would just get stuck and I would like start crying and when I start crying they would start laughing and like they would just continue laughing and it was really yeah that happened for I think since like the like all of my primary I couldn't speak properly so that was a very big problem um but like I had very good teachers that motivated me and prayed for me and all of that. So that's one aspect. And then I was I was in grade four, right? Yeah, I think I was in grade four. And by grade four, I was nine years old. Because in grade one, I was six. Grade two, I was seven. Grade three, I was eight. At grade four, I was nine years old. Nine years old, I get introduced to pornography. I walked in on someone um, watching it and then I ended up watching and then the, the, the place that we used to live in like we, we, we were in a like an apartment lot right so we used to stay on the last floor that had like a big balcony so that meant that anyone can throw things out of the windows and they would land on our balcony so there was this one time when this person threw like 
a chain like a, like a an entire book of like cds yes like at that time there were cds that existed we had a dvd player and all of that so when we were alone and being like i would in the house i would play that and that was actually before like so i had this one friend that i used to visit and where i used to go there and then she knew like on the dad's laptop where to find those things and then we would watch them and then after we would watch them like it just continued like throwing into me and then i couldn't get out of it and then like at that point in my life i that's when i started having like sexual intercourse with girls um i started sleeping with um other other women and it was because growing up in a home where it's a christian home like they no one expects you to all of a sudden be sleeping with girls so i started sleeping with girls and i i can say i was a homosexual for that like a long time because i didn't understand what was going on like that's also another thing i didn't understand what was going on i would go to church and anytime anyone was prophesying i remember i would always pray that does not come up i would always pray that they, that is not mentioned at all but i because of the exposure i had and the perversion of pornography and sex to me and how it looked to me and what i started doing that grew on me like it grew onto me that touched itself to me because i partnered with it and so it continues man i continue um having like this intercourse with girls at school when i visit some people i know some of my cousins it's like it's very um when i think about it it's just it's very disturbing and it's it's really disgusting when when i when i think about it now but at that time i didn't see anything wrong with it i honestly thought it was a normal thing for people to have sex with one another because i think it was also like for girls actually to have intercourse um with one another at that young age understand that i was nine years understand that i was a child what did i know at nine years old uh and because men like yo it's hard right so the more i continue to watch pornography like obviously my body now is the older I, I got the more curious I became so I would start searching and the internet gave way too much access like I started having way too much access on the internet and I was able now to access and like search these like it and the way it was so normalized in high school well yeah in high school and in school in general to talk about pornography to talk about masturbation as if it was a normal thing and because like even when we learn about it they do say that it does get addictive blah 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 blah. but like at the end of the day it is a very disgusting act and um i didn't see anything wrong with it um and i continued man like i had a very big struggle with my sexual identity for a long time and it wasn't because i didn't know who i was but it was because of the situations that had put me in certain environment and what i loved about or what like how god was in that aspect of my life he really just came and he embodied me and he hugged me and he 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 comforted me and even when i started speaking about it i wasn't i was so lucky not to have received people that are like yeah even kunkulia u u yawa zonda am a homosexual kunkulun janjan all of that i had very like even my parents it was it was a very um interesting um conversation that that it happened it wasn't a yeah belo and i in in you know it was very um like in the way I, it was like the news of me having thought i was a homosexual was received was very interesting and that i thank god for because it didn't push me away from him it drew me closer to him because like there is a verse in the scriptures that says come as you are and i came to god as i was with all my struggles with like cuz that like sexual immorality um carried me like it, it is like it's one sin that i've carried and 
another thing that i learned that when i was in that time it was very um i get it's such a secret like it was such a big secret and it was so like because it was such a big secret, it had so much power and control over me because I couldn't tell anyone what I was going through. Like, no one knew that I was struggling with um, leaving pornography. No one knew that I had a porn addiction. No one knew that I was masturbating. No one knew that I was sleeping with other girls. Nobody knew all those things for, like, a long time in my life. Like, when I say a long time, I mean, this is... Some people are probably going to only hear it from this video. And that's how long um i struggled with pornography sexual impurity and all of those things right um and then like i think it was i was in grade nine yes i was in grade nine when i first now so another thing was lies like i was a pathological liar i would form the greatest of lies so obviously if you have such a big secret that you're keeping from people you need to find a way to sugarcoat it and like not even find a way like it's it, it just comes naturally because that's who the enemy is and when he's working in your life you are this person that he is like you become the master of deception like he is so i was very deceptive like i remember very well that i would tell people like the stories like obviously when because people like it's it's that whole thing that of wanting to fit in so when people talk about them having boyfriends them having girlfriends like it was a very big taboo like obviously by the time that i was like when i was experimenting with my sexuality to even be experimenting with the sexuality so when my friends would talk about that i would um because i used to have a crush in grade seven that i still remember i think i one of my videos like um my first kiss so in so i used to use my crash in replacement of the girl that i was having intercourse with so we are gonna call her let me see um ah, ah we know we know we know we're not gonna give her a name but we um it was a very constant and consistent thing so it kept on growing and the more secretive it was the more lies i had to tell to keep up with myself because i, I couldn't keep up with myself so that was who was happening and it like it really built a very strong bridge with me and jesus and just me and my faith i i was starting to feel condemned you know like i i, I started feeling because obviously you will go to church like this is just me speaking to someone right now who might be struggling with homosexuality as a christian or just in general right you will if if you are in a church environment you will meet people that will speak about homosexuality in such a way that's so negative and because that's how the bible is really the, like the bible and god god is very like he is blunt in saying that listen i will ban an entire city because people are having sex same sex same same um sex with each other <laughs> that doesn't make sense but people are like you know um and yeah he would ban a whole city like he was very like in the bible he's very direct about how he feels about it and you cannot like it's not even hidden like it's it's, it's not like it's a hidden message it's something that's visible and in your face and being having grown up in an environment where we read the bible and the law was forced into me like do not steal do not lie do not have any other cause do not do this do not do not do not do not um obviously it was bound to happen that i would feel further away from him and i felt so far away and like he would always pull me close that's also the other thing like god continued to pursue me like he he came after me like he would have like even when i was doing all of those things would have like a person like man like this this, this this the thing that always gets to me that every time when i think back at that time in my life i would always think back that there was a person there was someone i could there was always a person that was speaking god into my life like speaking his love speaking his his goodness like it's like you know do you know salvation do you know grace do you like all these things i always had there was always someone and i want to be that someone for someone else i really want to be that someone that when you are going through a difficult time i'm that person like that god is using as a vessel to speak into your life like those people i don't even know where they are in their lives right now but they will know the impact they had and 
what type of seed they planted in my life because having a home that was already broken it was very difficult to film for me to even and then top of being bullied and it was just a lot going on and then um grade nine i started dating a boy and now like i like i was saying like man i was talking about being a, a like a pathological liar so i used to lie i would lie and like you know instead of a guy a, a girl in, in 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 that situation i would say it's a guy so i'll tell them the stories you know about how this is how we did it this is you know and all of that but um i was really like direct about like making sure i don't mention like the actual intercourse with the girl and so um that happened um then grade 9 to grade 10 to 11 12 first year <laughs> weirdly um so all through all of those years like i i had a very perverted mindset towards sex um one can say i had a, a negative relationship with it and i i was oversharing number one i was doing things that were out of character like i would I never had actual sex, but I had oral sex. So oral sex is like, oh, this is intense. <laughs> it's me thinking about the people I'm gonna watch this video, but like, <sighs> okay. Um, so I had oral sex. I would be in rooms with boys, men, whatever we wanna call them, boys, right? And I would like, I devalued my body because I was looking for validation from them. I would, it was like, and the way it was, it is so evil how the enemy uses things that we think are for our good, but are not. So it was a, like, cause grade 10, 11 was when I started gaining my voice, you know, I started building this um, confidence, but like while the confidence was building, I was, it was not the right one because deep down in my heart i knew i didn't like how i was being perceived because i was very good at putting up a facade i always say this because it's how my whole life has always been i would always come and be all smiling and all happy but deep down in my heart i'm crying and i'm disgusted by myself and i had so much self-hatred and so much self-insecurity that i would be on any guy i saw like I would do like some like because when i think about it that is prostitution the only difference was that i was not sleeping with them and but i was i was devaluing myself and opening some private areas of my life to men and using my mouth in ways that are not supposed to be used on anyone so that could like that was that has been like a big struggle that like coming back from all of that and just like trying to and the way god just came and like i'm i'll purify you you know like and he did like he 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 really made me clean he really made me like so i like oh my god so i had like a very dirty mind and the reason i had that mind was because i was exposed to porn at an age but when I came to God, like when he, he started moving in my life and I started allowing him in all areas of my life, he sort of like, he forgot, like, you know, when you come to him and you're expecting him, you know, like, cause religion will tell you, what he, yeah, he, the God's wrath, you're going to feel it, his anger, his frustration and whatnot, you're going to feel all these pains, but that's not how I felt. Like I felt love. Like when I first encountered God, I felt so much love. And the one thing that he kept on telling me was, I love you, because that's the thing that pushed me in to do all those things, because I was never, I never received love. So I was in search for love in every single person that I would like, and I used sexual, like the sex aspects of my life, like just having it being perverted like that made me think that love is sex, because that's what media tells you, that the more sex people have, that's the more love they have. And that's not even the truth, though. And like just being pushed into all of those fears god just coming in and being like 
I forget all of that. I have an amnesia to all your sins. I love you the way you are. And I will teach you how to please me. And I will let the Holy Spirit, I'll give you a Holy Spirit that will allow you to please me. Because he knows that our flesh can never please him. He's like, listen, I will give you a Holy Spirit. And that Holy Spirit is what you will use to please me. And and when the Holy Spirit came upon me, like I received power, like there's a scripture that says I received power and the Holy Spirit came upon me. And I'm telling you that I, like even though I still struggled with some of the things, because sometimes my flesh will have more power than my spirit, I still struggle with lust. Well, I, I had a big struggle with lust and yeah, lust, uh, like because sexual immorality stuff, like the whole sexual like, um, like oral sex and sleeping with girls like the last time I slept with a girl was I think four years ago I was in grade 11 that's not four years ago now nah, it is four years ago like sometime four years ago that was the last time and I didn't even like it I didn't even enjoy it it was a proving a point thing that's one other thing like I yo I was a people pleaser growing up in high school I was a people pleaser I wanted to please everyone I just wanted like because that 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 thing it, it like it made me feel like I was it fooled me and it had me thinking I was doing the right thing and that's what the enemy does like he fools you to think that what you're doing is good for your health is good for you and that's not even the truth and yeah God just came and I think I should just speak about God right now like God so throughout all of those seasons in my life where i was going through sexual perversion pornography um because like that also led to because there's some instances where I, I i almost got raped there are instances where it almost happened like there's just so many cases where like when i look back i can see that god's hand was in that situation that the prayers of my parents the prayers of my pastors the prayers of people around me that were covering me were like it was generally moving in my life because there are people that are praying for you that you don't know are praying for you like your grandmother most likely she prays for you every single day she prays for you like one thing i can tell you that your parents they pray for you as long as they are believers they pray for you like they pray and even if they don't pray for you they wish you well like they wish you well like regardless of what you do they wish you well that's why a parent can still love you and appreciate you regardless of what you you like what mistakes you do it's because like that relationship that parent child relationship is the same relationship we have with god as his children we are his children and even when i was lost or i was in confusion because that's what i'm going to call it like because that time of my life i was in confusion i was not serving god with my whole heart i was just serving god with some of my heart serving god with some form of hatred serving god with some form of anger serving god and oh i also used to steal like i used to be i used to shoplift like i used to go into stores and shoplift there was a time i actually got caught with acronyms and they put me in like a a jail like i don't know it's not a jail of some sort they, they could put me into their store and then um what's the word they um they asked for my parents number and i had forgotten i didn't know my mom's number which was very weird yo that day it was it was like it was the worst experience of my life and i think i, I was yeah i was shoplifting earrings so like because what led me to shoplift and steal was because i couldn't ask for money and this is something i still struggle with but i'm better at asking for money now i couldn't ask for money i couldn't ask for things so i was rather i would rather be in debt and like steal like at, at the time i was really young though like it was it was a very i think every child has that stage i don't know if every child but i think some kids have that stage where they are stealing and you know but yeah but God was just there, like, like, when I am at church or when I share about God and I speak about Him, it's because I have seen Him move in my life. I have seen Him do amazing things for me. I have seen Him bless me 
even when I don't deserve it. I mean, if you watch and listen to both these videos and the person I was before I met him and the person I was even when I was getting to know him, it's mind-blowing to me that he still loved me. He still, like, I can still go back to him when I go into prayer now. He still listens to me that even when I was doing all of those things and I was not in, in the way that he wanted, like, me to be, he would still listen and he would still take care of me and still love me and show me his goodness. It is, it is mind-blowing. It's mind-blowing, really. Like, because that's the God he is. He's a merciful God. Like, he is literal mercy like if that's what they call mercy and grace it's unmerited favor i didn't even deserve any of the things that you know when i think about it it's like no man and i can fully say confidently say like because healing is a process it's not a destination so is faith so is salvation they are all a process like everything is it's it's a work in progress and with being a Christian or just being at this point and being a believer, God doesn't want perfection from us. He wants progress. And the purpose of me telling you my testimony is for you to see that I also started somewhere. I was also found because God is always seeking for us. We like it's so funny like the irony like he says seek me and you'll find me and he's literally everywhere so the person that he's looking for is you ever wondered why when you are not with god they call you the lost it's because he's looking for you now you are the lost sheep he's looking for and yeah i think um thank god i didn't cry that much because um for me, not crying much is a sign of healing, and because I used like the, like none of these stories I was going to tell you without tears in my eyes, because um, the enemy, especially in terms of sexual immorality and like my my phase with homosexuality, um, like all of those things, man, like satani, the devil had like me drowning in shame, that even when I was in God's presence. I felt like I, I didn't deserve it because I'm I'm doing all these things. And what he had had like the enemy had me thinking, Wuti, um I'm the one that has to like take myself out of that. And that's not how it happened. God literally introduced his Holy Spirit into my life. And the more I got to know him, the more certain things started falling off my life. Like literally they started falling off my life. Like because if you ask me like how it happened i can't tell you but all i can tell you is i love men um but i don't love them in 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 a way where i devalue myself and put myself in vulnerable positions because i love them you know um like god is good he's just beautiful and yeah i'm completely free so the next episode of Holy Perspective, which I forgot to say at the beginning of the video, but yeah, the next ep episode of Holy Perspective is going to deal with encounters. Um, that's where I'm going to explain now, like, you know, how that one encounter or that invitation in God's presence led to a test, like these two testimonies. Well, I don't know if there are two, but I think it's like, it's a, like, it's all of them. I tried to summarize them all in one short video. Well, in two videos that are relatively not that short but yeah thank you for watching um see you in the next video don't to like comment share and subscribe to the channel yeah.